Welcome to Hardy's Winery, Backyard Edition. We're going to take a look at what goes on behind the fence. Yep, this is a the part they don't want you to see. In particular, we're going to focus on how populations lose genetic diversity and genetic variation. This all sounds concerning. I'm nervous. You might remember that genetic diversity describes how many different genes and alleles there are in a species gene pool. Genetic variation is a similar term that describes how many alleles there are in a population's gene pool. When alleles are lost from a population, the population's genetic variation decreases. Here, at Hardy's Winery, alleles are represented by flowers. To represent loss of genetic variation, this careful winemaker is picking flowers off his grapes to remove them from his pool of wine. Or should I say, gene pool of wine. Okay, maybe that's a stretch. But he is wearing genes. Species with low genetic diversity are more likely to go extinct. In these populations, harmful recessive genotypes can become more common. Additionally, when genetic diversity is low, there is usually less phenotypic diversity, which makes it easier to wipe out a lot of the population with a single environmental change, for example, a drought or the arrival of a new predator. Now, let's take a look at how populations actually lose diversity. Take a look at these allele flowers drip away in the wind. They represent genetic drift. Drift occurs when a population's gene pool changes due to random chance in who survives and reproduces. When genetic drift removes alleles from a population, that population's variation decreases. Notice that way more of the small allele flowers are drifting away than the large flowers. That's because genetic drift is more influential in smaller populations. Typically, in small populations, there are fewer copies of each allele. This makes it more likely that any one allele will be completely lost from the population due to chance. Now, we're going to continue this little gander around the winery and take a look at some of the processes that can reduce population size and contribute to genetic drift. To start, let's take a look at the sommelier getting some sangria ready for his hard-working flower-picking bud. The neck of that bottle is pretty clogged up with fruit but a small trickle of wine is pouring right through. This represents a population bottleneck. A bottleneck occurs when a large percentage of a population is wiped out, leaving behind a random assortment of survivors to repopulate. Usually, lots of genetic variation is lost during the initial wipeout. But the surviving population is also more susceptible to losing alleles to genetic drift since the population is now much smaller. Well, clearly, one employee got into the sangria. Looks like she's about to immigrate on out of here. And she's taking a suitcase full of allele flowers with her. I know who's not winning Employee of the Month. She represents emigration, which is when individuals leave a population. This can remove alleles from the population and decrease genetic variation in that population. Furthermore, if population size decreases after immigration, there may be more genetic drift and more loss of variation. Let's move on to Founder's Vineyard to see the founder effect in action. Over here, the scum, <coughs> I mean, lovely folks at Founder's Vineyard started their very own winery with seeds stolen from Hardy's Winery. Jerks. Well, anyways, what exactly is this founder effect our friendly competitors have going on? The founder effect occurs when a small number of migrants settle in a new area and start a population. Because the starting population consists of many fewer individuals than the population they came from, the new population typically has fewer alleles and will have lower genetic variation as it grows. You'll notice that at the Founder's Vineyard, they're only growing one color of allele flower. Since they started with just a few stolen seeds, it looks like they ended up with a pretty undiverse population. Serves them right, those stealing sacks of shit. Okay, let's take a look at the breeding inn, where inbreeding happens? Um, who came up with that slogan? Well, inbreeding is the mating of closely related individuals. When population sizes are small, inbreeding is particularly likely to occur because individuals have fewer mate options and are more likely to encounter their own relatives. Here at Hardy's Winery, they've got a little dog breeding side hustle. Times are hard. Thanks, Founders Vineyard. Unfortunately, the allegedly prize-winning show dogs they bred are closely related and carry some of the same harmful recessive alleles. That means these gorgeous pups are likely to have some offspring who are homozygous recessive for diseased phenotypes. 
Oh, no. It appears that some of their offspring do have those harmful recessive phenotypes. That look in dad's eyes says it all. So that means we've got a case of inbreeding depression. We've represented inbreeding depression with this distraught dog breeder weeping by her failed show pups. Inbreeding depression occurs when mating between relatives reduces a population's fitness because harmful recessive phenotypes are more common. Inbreeding itself does not remove alleles or genes from a population, but if it causes inbreeding depression, population size will decrease, and the odds of losing alleles to genetic drift will increase. You know, I'm not so sure about this behind-the-scenes experience. Why couldn't we just go to the tasting room? Let's review and get out of here. A population's genetic variation decreases when alleles are lost from the gene pool. Genetic drift is random change in a population's gene pool. It has a greater impact on small populations, making them more likely to lose genetic variation due to drift. Population bottlenecks happen when a large percentage of a population dies and a random assortment of survivors is left behind. Survivors only carry some of the alleles that were present in the original population, so the population that regenerates from the survivors has less variation. Immigration is when individuals leave a population, which can also cause the population to lose genetic variation. The founder effect occurs when a small number of migrants settle in a new area and start a population. Because there are fewer alleles in the starting population, it will have less genetic variation as it grows. Finally, inbreeding is when closely related individuals mate. And inbreeding depression occurs when inbreeding leads a population to have reduced fitness. This puts a population at risk of becoming smaller and losing genetic variation through genetic drift. Well, I don't know who's in charge here, but between the fleeing drunk employees and the failed dog breeding side hustle, I think these folks might need to reassess their model. Let's get out of here before we stumble upon any more failed business ventures. <laughs>